What is up, guys? It's the Sound Alchemist, and I'm here with Gersh One. Hi, very wholesome. And today we're back to answer your questions in another episode of For the Greater. This is a video series where we answer the questions left by you, the viewer. If you have a question for us, comment down below. Put question in front of your question because we get to those questions first. That is what Just One has asked. And I'm going to give it over to you. Yep, it's DK Just One. Mm -hmm. Can't if, forget the DK. If the Emperor is manifesting into a god in the warp, what would happen if the Emperor on the throne was healed and was good as new? Would the God Emperor in the Warp be a different entity to the Flesh and Blood Emperor, or would the God Juice just get sucked back into the Big E? Would Big E technically be an avatar of himself in the Warp? That's a good question, yeah. and really, the lore is vague enough for it to go anyway. Yeah, I feel like if you do have Big E, like as in the Flesh, the uh, Warp Emperor will be called Tupac. So it's like you got Big E and you got Tupac. Yeah, and then we can... Um, relive the east side versus west side but in 40k mm -hmm. so it'd be like a horus heresy 3.0 well 2.0 i guess the yeah <laughs> <laughs> there's been other civil wars but i guess they're not they haven't been as big right um but yeah so if th there's benefits to having both situations if you do have a god entity and then you have the corpse entity um then there's a dilemma and there's a schism within the mindset of the Imperium, which I love because the autonomy of the Space Marines have allowed them to continue to understand that the Emperor was a, a bad mofo, but he was not a god. Mm -hmm. um, so they obviously would try to defend the corpse that's sitting on the throne. Which or, is what they've been doing this whole time. Yeah. It's the same thing with the Adeptus Custodis, same things with the... Uh, I don't the know about sisters? the Sisters of Battle. Because they, they yeah. see him more as a god. Yeah. Um, but then at, and then at the same time, there would be like the entity that exists in the warp and it's talking to them. And then they would have like the few, like the black Templars, the Legion of the Damned, the Imperial Saints, uh, that would, they would have that on, on their side. And then there'd be kind of like a, if there is no connection between the corpse emperor and the God emperor, um, then yeah, there's, there's, there would be some, some civil war going on. Yeah, definitely. Um, but also it would mean that the Imperium would get a little, like, realm within the warp, uh, which is cool mm -hmm. to think about, where, like... Um, <laughs> you say cool, but it's like you're being besieged by chaos on all sides. Yeah, but I think it would just be, like, an area of calmness, where, like, the Emperor's power, because of his worship, is able to push back the other entities. And, because um, you know how, like, Korn's realm... Corn is constantly sending people to attack Slanesh, and Slanesh is constantly sending demons to attack Corn's demons, and it's like a never, it's like a, a struggle. Mm -hmm. It would be cool to see that with the realm of the light. So then you would have the God Emperor and his realm, and constantly being like, constantly fighting, mm -hmm. uh, and and it would be all these Death Corps of Krieg people that have died with their shovels, but they're all white and they're fighting the demons inside the warp. So it would add a whole other element, would still, but still maintaining the Corpse Emperor, the Space Marines, the tabletop that we know and love, and yeah. all that kind of stuff. It'd be really cool. I gotta tell my Theo Chui about it. He'd really <laughs> love it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the other, the other side, when <laughs> if if um, if they were connected, so like let's say that it was a Corpse Emperor and the God Emperor, but he worked through the uh, the God Emperor then that also has its perks, too. Mm -hmm. Because you don't have the Civil War, all you have is a new leader force. Right. Which essentially is like a super Primarch leading the, the armies of the Imperium. And you have the potential to have avatars, like you said. Mm -hmm. Which would be pretty cool. I think I'd rather have that, have the Emperor ascend to Godhood, and then have avatars of the Emperor. Yeah. Like, take the body of, an, of a saint... Mm -hmm. And then it goes from a living saint to the big E. Right. Um, speaking of which, did you see the elves that were released uh, or showcased a few days ago? Yep. Did you see that suit of armor? Yeah, the, the glowing or the mm -hmm. with nobody in it. Yeah. I think it'd be something pretty cool like that, just like on a bigger scale with like a flaming sword or something like that. Where it's like the aura of order taking control of like a suit of armor or maybe like a... I don't know. I feel like it's got to be something more badass. Yeah. 
something bigger than mm -hmm. Gilliman. Um, but the, that would be cool, and it would yeah. make sense. Because that suit of armor, it's like kind of small. Yeah. And then you have like that other model that like, just by looking at it, it looks like it'll break. Oh, With like the, the griffin. Yeah, the sphinx. Yeah. Yeah, but GW has the technology to build something amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and having a an avatar of the emperor, or the god emperor, and, and then still having the emperor over in the mm -hmm. golden throne and having them be connected would be awesome. Yeah. Um, I think the best model that we currently have would be the Celestine Prime uh, from the Age of Sigmar Sigmarine guys. Oh, the guy who's flying mm -hmm. and the thing's little going. swirlies. Yeah. Yeah. He's cool. You're cool. Thanks. <laughs> but on to the next question. That was a very good one. And this one kind of ties in similarly because we're talking about the Emperor. This one's by James Carden. Since the druids that made the Emperor were pretty much just dirty, hairy ape men that could barely see warp flames in their campfire, let alone perform psychic feats, wouldn't a similar ritual performed by the Grey Knights, or even the Thousand Sons, create an even more powerful psyker than that of the Big E himself? No, because of... Um, the thousands of years that have been poured into the Emperor. Right, yeah. He didn't just like pop up and be like, yeah, I'm this strong all mm -hmm. the time. It's He's been... He's, he's technically immortal. Um, he's a perpetual... And he's like progressed, right? So he's like a level ten character. Whereas the, if the Great Knights create something, even if he's level three, it's still a level three character compared to a level ten. Mm -hmm. And there's also plot armor, <laughs> yeah, that prevents that, right? Because I mean, it is possible probably to create some being of like powerful might, but anything they do, it'll like pale in comparison to the Emperor. Not to mention that it would be seen as heresy. Mm -hmm. uh, contradicting ourselves from the last video um <laughs> but it would it would be like messed it's, up but it's like oh what if the emperor said that it was okay to do this and he's going to transfer his essence to that body or something which yeah they they could write mm -hmm. it that way because it, it's written to make anything work pretty much yeah but uh, again like it, it seems like a cop out mm -hmm. it seems like the lore constructed the the emperor to be like the epitome of of what a psyker should be right and then for the gray knights or any faction to be like no nah, we can build something better mm -hmm. it, it just to sucks. even have that mindset of we can make something better than the emperor you're already into heresy territory right yeah next question comes from uh, oscar ng do you find it weird that the Space Marines use projectile-based weapons mostly uh, when there are other, maybe better alternatives, like laser or plasma? Um, so the reason for that is because of supply and demand. So you have to think of the Imperium as just a giant machine producing war... Yeah, producing war. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's easier to produce more war or to have your your forces, your military forces, well-armed if you give them, like, a good balance of, um, what is it called? Like, effective tools, I guess? Yeah. yeah. Um, and it also depends on what you're trying to do. But um, if you have something that's easy to clean and take care of, that's not too expensive to create, that still has enough punch and enough firepower, then you're on good hands. And a lot of the weapons, like the plasma weapons and the la laser weapons and the melta weapons, are limited. Mm -hmm. They were created most of the time by a forge world that is either has regressed to the point where they can't create that weapon anymore, or somehow the the, the weapons that they create are not as good as the ones that were first created. Right. Because the um, the blueprints of it might have been lost or whatever. Which is why we rarely see any volkite weapons phosphorus weapons and i think there was one more but anyway like if, if you go back into the forge world aspect of like space marines and stuff you'll see a whole slew of like weaponry and stuff like that and i think the best example is the dreadnought the chassis for the dreadnought has you could say evolved but it's actually regressed they were much stronger and better equipped for war back during the 30k era than they are now in 40k yeah, I mean, I don't know about the uh, Primaris, but they seem to be like the in-between. Yep. Yeah. Gracias la vida. Next question. 
This one is by Michael Treeend. Who would you want to see play Eisenhorn whenever the TV show gets off the ground? That's a good question. I feel like Michael Fassbender. Which like, one's that one? The dude who played Magneto. Not not. Oh yeah, yeah like young he would Magneto. Be, he would yeah. be a good uh, Eisenhorn. Mm-hmm. Um, what's the dude from La La Land and from uh, <laughs> Blade Runner? Um, oh. who doesn't like the cereal? He doesn't like the cereal? Yeah, it's like a, a meme of them trying to feed him cereal, and he goes like that. <laughs> um, Ryan Gosling. Yeah, there Ryan go. Gosling would be cool. <laughs> I think he, he is... He's, he's He seems like a really good young Eisenhorn. Like, he's clever, but at the same time, he doesn't... Like, he knows he's clever, and he knows that you're going to underestimate him type of... He gives me that vibe. Mm-hmm. But I think probably the best one is either Gilbert Gottfried or Danny DeVito. Yeah. Hands down. Danny DeVito would be a good older Eisenhorn. A younger would be Gilbert Gottfried. Gilbert Gottfried, yeah. Because yeah. when you think youth, you think Aflac. Or Iago from Aladdin. Mm-hmm. Next question. This one's from... The best Virginian. <laughs> what are your favorite long lost earth stranded tyranid or just cryptids in general? Oh, okay. Um, that's a good question. For me, hands down, it's the Loch Ness Monster. Back in like middle school, I was like obsessed with like trying to find out if he was real. I'd watch all these like Discovery Channel like specials and stuff like that. And I even told myself, I am going to travel there one day and explore the Loch. You know, you still can. <laughs> But, I mean, they pretty much already disproved it. Oh, yeah. Well, no, they haven't disproved it. But, I mean, they've used all this, like, echolocation and radar. And they found out that the the actual lock. lock is deeper than most people thought. Right, and it connects to, like, other underground locks or, like, channels of water and stuff like that. Yeah, so there probably is something down there. Um, maybe even, like, what are they called? Plesiosaurs? That'd be kind of cool. More like please me or so. Whoa, whoa! I, I I think I like Quetzalcoatl. Mm-hmm. He's just like the flying serpent dude, uh, and he's supposed to be like a god. So he probably emanates some type of psychic presence if he is a tyrannid bioform. Mm-hmm. AKA Rayquaza. Rayquaza. Sasquatch would be a pretty cool one too, but it's like he's so far away from what a tyrannid looks like that mm-hmm. is he really a tyrannid? I mean, we don't really know what Tyranids were back then because... True. They evolved based they evolved, on... Yeah. yeah. The Chupacabra? Yeah. Ooh, don't That's tell so me Tio Chewy. <laughs> um, next question comes from Remy Hain. Has there ever been records of Space Marine chapters recruiting people from the Imperial Guard? Um, no, not that I can... Well, okay, so that's, that's a lie. So, um, yes... Kind of. Planetary Defense Forces. <laughs> PDFs. Yes. So they will recruit from the Planetary Defense Force. The Ultramarines are really well known for that. Um, and a lot of successor chapters of the Ultramarines are known for that. Oh, even the uh, Sons of Dorn. Check out the 40 facts on the Sons of Dorn. They specifically have like lineages of like military families that give their sons up to the Sons of Dorn. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I guess space wolves kind of count. If like you're a really good warrior, they'll pluck you out yeah. and put you on trial that you'll probably die. Mm. <laughs> but if you pass that trial, then you become the sky warriors. Yes, yes. Next question comes from Timothy Armstrong. When a new world is found in the Imperium, where do the colonists come from? Neighboring planets. Mm-hmm. Pretty much whatever's closer to that planet, they'll send exploratory fleets to... Basically say, hey, you're alive, so are we. Join the Imperium or die. <laughs> and, and also it depends on the type of planet that it is. Because right. if it seems like it's going to be an agri-world, they're going to go to other, other agri-worlds and be like, we need farmers and people who know of mm-hmm. this type of planetary environment. If you need miners, they go to Chuck E. Cheese. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. Yeah. It's like if you go to an agri-world, they just say, we are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> Last question. Uh, this one is by Jason Smith. Can Blood Angel Dreadnoughts suffer from the Black Rage? Or can Space Wolf Dreadnoughts get the curse of the Wolfen? If not, por qué? Yes and yes. Mm-hmm. There's actually models for them. Yep. 
Um, we kind of touched base on this on the previous uh, For the Greater Wall, where we talked about Sanguinius. Um, but yeah, there are black rage uh, sarcophagi that have a person with the black rage in it. They're called Death Company Dreadlocks. Mm -hmm. And then they're called Wolfen Dreadlocks. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's a named character, right? He is. Uh, yeah, there is specifically one Wolfen Dreadnought. Yeah. And uh, they're both really badass because they have like talons and claws and stuff. And they're kitted for close, close combat carnage. I had a burp. <laughs> and those were the questions for today. If you guys have more questions for us, comment down below. Don't forget we have a Patreon. A dollar a month goes a long way. A Facebook. Hit us up there. And an Instagram. Maybe we'll get a bite to eat. This is Gersh One. <laughs> the Sound Alchemist. Out of here. <laughs>